Welcome to the Accounting Success Podcast. Ian Wellam is a chartered accountant, helping other CPA firms maximize their profit potential and become the most relevant advisor to clients. To learn how you can add value, introduce new revenue streams, and move into high-value advisory services, simply go to www.haydenrock.com. On the podcast, Ian brings together successful accountants and industry thought leaders to share with you how they serve business owners and how you can too. And now, here's your host, Ian Wellam. Hello and welcome to the Accounting Success Podcast. With me on the call today is Andrew Berg, founder and managing partner of Berg Advisors LLC outside of Philadelphia. Andrew has been providing CPA services for over 23 years and has a unique approach to running his CPA firm, which I'm very excited to talk to him about today. Berg Advisors was named an Intuit firm of the future and specializes in small business services, ranging from week-to-week bookkeeping services to tax planning to outsource CFO services. The firm offers a popular back-office support system to business owners called Boss. Berg Advisors is also an academy firm for RootWorks, which I hope we have time to talk about as well today. But first, Andrew, welcome to the podcast. Hi, thank you. Well, I'm really glad you're able to join us today, share your thoughts, etc., with the listeners. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot for them to learn about. So, uh, again, thank you for being open to sharing. Great, no problem. Looking forward to it. I actually really like a lot of things that your firm's doing right now. And obviously, on the podcast, anxious to explore them with you. But I always like to start with some background basics. For example, uh, what got you into accounting in the first place? Uh, what inspired you to become a CPA? So why don't we start off with that, Andrew? Sure. Thank you. Uh, so I was born and raised in, uh, just outside of Philadelphia and went to college in the University of Pittsburgh and graduated with a math and economics degree. Kind of wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Very poor direction in college. Was told maybe go into banking, finance, go into actuarial sciences, and didn't really like any of those. So I met with somebody who was a public accountant back in the early 90s who was kind of doing it his way and different, and I always thought public accounting was about tax returns and long hours and busy seasons, and he showed me kind of that it could be a lot different than that and more about helping businesses and help people succeed. So I decided to go back to take some accounting credits. I was successful in that and eventually passed my CPA exam and went into public accounting and um, started out at a big firm doing auditing and did that for about two years and hated it and decided to move on to a small business firm. And from that moment forward, since 1994, which is, I guess, now almost 20 years, or is that 30 years, 20 years, um, I've been doing kind of small business services, helping people become more successful by focusing my attention on what their needs are. So um, love doing, love helping people. I think it's, was, I was in, born and ingrained wanting to help people. Um, I love money and finance and, and numbers. So I think it was just a natural fit to put those two together. That's very interesting. In fact, you got a different perspective right from the beginning with your original mentor. Yeah, he, um, my uncle was a public accountant while I was a young, you know, in my teens, and I would go to his house on Thanksgiving, and I would see him sitting in his basement working, and then he would come up and eat Thanksgiving and go back downstairs and work, and I'd be like, oh, my God, what's he doing? I would never want this job, so I never wanted to be in public accounting, and then when I met with this mentor of mine, he basically showed me the way and showed me how it can be different. It can be about providing services that the clients want, not that they need. It can be about um, finding out what their um, what their fears are, their hopes and dreams, and really, really was able it was the way for me to be able to pull multiple skill sets together, including part-time psychologist, part-time lawyer, part-time accountant, part-time everything. Um, and it's really been an amazing journey. So, what, what do you like most about what you do? Uh, my day is never the same. I wake up in the morning and I have no idea what my day is going to be like, even if I have it scheduled. And again, we don't really participate in fire drills any longer in my firm, which a lot of public accounting firms still do. Um, so we 
generally have a, a scope of work that we work on with a client, but because we do a lot of consulting and business advisor services, I never know who's really going to call me looking for a specific type of advice. And um, I love the fact that I do not know that my I know that my day is going to be unpredictable, and that um, somehow, some way, I'm going to be helping people with what they need. I'm sorry, what they want. Sorry about that. What they want, not what they need. Right. Right. Well, I was going to say I get the vibe that your firm's different. It's a little stronger than a vibe because I'm, uh, you're actually telling me uh, that your 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 firm's different. Um, and would that be uh, would that be fair to say that from a typical CPA firm, you're you're demonstrably diff- different? Yeah. So I'm on a mission to try and change people's perception in our industry about what public accountants can be like. Um, our industry is obviously getting older, and I think there's a traditional base of services that most accounting firms provide. And because most of the industry is an older-based industry, they push those exact services. And I think that there's a poor perception out there about what public accountants can or can't do. And I... Um, kind of always knew in my mind that there was a better way to do things than to just be an order taker. And I've been modeling my firm over many years to get to the point where it can be the type of firm I want that provides services that clients uh, with, that my clients want and not just what they need. And the need-based services are kind of um, uh, ancillary, even though we provide them, they're, they're ancillary to what we really want to do. And uh, I always knew there was a difference way to be this type of firm. And it came to light for me when I read Darren Root, who um, is the owner of Rootworks and Root, um, his own firm, um, Root and Associates, wrote a book um, way back when that I read that basically taught you that you can run your firm like a business and not like an accounting firm. That book was called The E-Myth Accountant. Um, So I read that book and realized, it opened my eyes and realized, wow, there is a different way. There's somebody else out there that fought the way I did and eventually met and joined Darren's Rootworks firm, and he's written other books about it, and we've really kind of drank the Kool-Aid, and I truly believe it that um, most firms out there need to understand there's this new wave coming in our industry with technology and millennials, and people don't want to do things the old-fashioned way, and I want to be on the top of that wave as it comes crashing to the shore. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, everything you said is right in sync with what we believe. But I think it's, you made some interesting distinction a few minutes ago. Can you talk about what you meant when you say what clients want versus what they need? Mm-hmm. So I think that most, cli- most clients out there think when they hire an accountant, they want somebody to prepare their tax return, somebody to close their books, look at their accounting, maybe even help their bookkeepers or controllers or themselves with some basic needs like answer this question for me. And what we do is we dive down really, really deep with our clients and try to understand who they are, why they open that business, uh, why they're doing what they're doing today versus when they open that business. Has it gone in the right direction or wrong direction? And we want to understand exactly what that client's goals are. And we never want to judge how they got there. We just want to help them get to what their goals are. And we utilize these skill sets to be able to put a plan together of how the client can start focusing their attention on what makes them the most successful and make them the most profitable. And sometimes that includes technology. So we'll always bring a new piece of technology in for efficiencies um, purposes. And sometimes it's about training and putting procedures in place for our clients who just don't understand how to do it. I mean, I've come to the conclusion that People are really, really busy, and that technology hasn't really helped make people less busy. I think it's actually helped us make, make us more busy. And these business owners don't know who to turn to to get the right advice. And who more qualified than the accountant to provide advice that they would trust? But most accountants are afraid to say to client, let me help you with this, because they either can't do it or don't know how to do it, who to turn to. So they keep their mouth shut and keep providing the order-taking services. We, on the other hand, we would prefer to take, give the order-taking services to somebody else and let us go in and say, oh, you're having trouble with your inventory management? I'm all over it. Let me help put a procedure in place, get the people in place, and make it so that you have no more fears about that, that procedure. So we dig in almost like being um, a part of their team. Uh, we are basically an employee to some extent of our, every one of our clients' teams. 
Now, the the comment you made about running uh, your practice like a business rather than an accounting practice, I'm sure that resonates with business owners as well because effectively you're a business owner just like them. <laughs> yeah, great point. Um, absolutely. And, you know, it's so funny. I can sit around all day and say, wait a minute, I'm helping all these clients figure out how to make more money and be more successful. Why aren't I doing that for myself? If I'm so smart and I know so much of how to tell somebody else, why aren't I doing that for myself? So what we decided to do is we decided to build a business in our, of, our, of our own where we're le- less about order taking, meaning we, uh, more, less about emergency and surprises, more about scheduling, more about technology, more about flexibility in our staff being able to get the work done from multiple locations, not just in our office, um, more about helping people so our the staff I have feel empowered to want to help somebody reach a solution as opposed to just hammering away at a tax return or hammering away at bank reconciliations. And because of that, we've been able to focus their attention on the clients that want those services and therefore grow a business around the type of client who respects the type of people that we are, not just that we respect the type of people that they are. And I think that's a piece that gets lost in accounting a lot. You go get a new client, you're like, oh, my God, I landed a great, great new client. You never think for one second that that person is going to cause you personal grief because they don't really fit in with your personal model. And why should we take that stuff home to our families just like they're not taking it on their families? And I think it's time that accountants start to be choosy and be more professional and more uh, and more proof to clients out there that we should be respected as opposed to being more about more like being order takers. So do you have a system or a way that you assess uh, a prospective client when they come along and, and uh, basically present themselves as being a potential client? Yes. So we do a um, – we go through a – we have a, a, an entire checklist and handwritten onboarding procedure. So we – our onboarding procedure begins um, with the – the initial connection to a contact who may or may not become a client and leads all the way up to the first 90 days of the onboarding of that client and everything that happens from the beginning of time. And that could take years, by the way, that process of meeting somebody and then becoming 90 days of a client could be anywhere from, you know, 90 days to a year of that happening. And everything within there is strategically set up to make sure that the client understands how we want to work and we understand how they want to work, and we want to make sure that we fit together because it's not just their decision if they want us, and it's not just our decision if we want them. It's both of our decisions to know if we fit. And guess what? Sometimes things just don't fit. They just don't, and that's nobody's fault. So we want to make sure that we walk through this checklist on a regular basis and verify exactly whether these clients fit for us and whether they think we fit for them. So we have detailed questions that we send out that clients can answer, and it gives us a sense as to who they are and also tells them kind of a little bit about who we are. And when we sense a vibe that it's not going to fit, then we are quick to move away because we've had situations in the past where we've thought it was going to work and it doesn't. So we try to be more about our instinct now than we, were, than we used to be in the past. Now, do you have a um, specific um, – why don't you just give me a quick rundown of what a typical client would – or the, the ideal client would look like? Mm-hmm. Um, so our ideal client would be somebody who has a business and has probably had an accountant and recognizes that their accountant isn't able to provide them any more service than they've been able to, probably an order taker type person. But this person is growing their business to a point where they need direction, um, probably somebody who's handling a lot of stuff themselves and is looking for maybe a little bit of mental support for themselves um, in understanding the right, uh, the right way to make decisions and or the next hire to make, and somebody who realizes that they've made it there based on their top line, and now it's the time to start focus on, focusing on their bottom line and then their margins and understand that procedures and back office is just as important as sales. And it's that person who realizes at that moment that they don't have enough information available to them to make the right decisions and and 
probably because their relationship with their outside financial, financial counsel has been more about order taking and less about understanding the business and, and helping them understand what the next move might be in order for them to, and every, look, every business has the same goal, right? They want to work less and make more money and have something that's worth something down the road when they want to sell it or retire or whatever it is. So everybody has that same goal. So at some point, everybody has that inflection of saying, I need to know what my next step is to reach those goals. And I think when they realize they don't have the right counsel at that moment, that's the right fit for us. So we can provide all the same services uh, that any traditional accounting firm can. The difference is when we see a problem, we're the first one in we're like the first responders, and we're right in there not only providing, uh, telling them about the problem, but also providing a solution. And in some cases, we're the ones actually giving them, not only telling them the solution, but actually providing the service of making the solution happen, whether that's training or installation, new software. It could be a multitude of things. Now, I mentioned earlier that Berg Advisors was named an Intuit firm of the future, what would be the criteria for that, and how does that help you define the brand? So um, when we initially applied for the firm of the future, we really believed we were a firm of the future because we're thinking about providing services to cl- that people want, and we're embracing technology and embracing the millennial generation coming in and embracing the collaborative-based at- atmosphere that both um, staff and clients want to work in. And, and, and we recognized that, to me, the future was about providing services and growing a business in this particular industry in a different fashion. I think a lot of people probably went into the firm of the future for different reasons. We went in because we felt we really are thinking globally about what's going to happen to our industry five years from now, eight years from now, and be ready for that today. So, so I believe that when we initially went for it, that's, that's the reason we did it. Um, it has opened up a tremendous amount of doors. I have met so many people who think just like me. And I have found the most amazing thing that I've found in this journey is that our industry is being in, uh, inundated with a tremendous amount of people taking business away from us who are not CPAs and are not stuck with the traditional model. And it amazed me because I'm thinking to myself, wow, I'm focused on tax returns, and these people don't even care about tax returns. I'm March heads down busy, and they're picking up more clients, and that's where I want to be. So unlike some new people who are firms of the future who never had to worry about what it looked like, what their firms used to look like in the traditional model, I actually had to change my firm model. I still am changing my firm model over to that new model. But I do have one thing, an advantage above them, and that is I did operate and understand how to operate as a CPA firm and can go that angle as well, whereas most of those others are providing bookkeeping and accounting-based services. But they're still thinking the same way I'm thinking, which is how do I help my clients? How do I install this technology and make them more efficient? How do I run my business more like a, uh, my firm more like a business, not like an accounting firm? And I, I see what's happening in our industry, and a lot of accounting firms, traditional based accounting firms are missing this. It's kind of like I use the example of the BlackBerry and Apple. I think to myself, what happened the first time BlackBerry heard that Apple was making an iPhone? What, what did they say to themselves when they were sitting in this boardroom? You know, most of them probably said, well, Apple can't make a phone. What do we care? And then look what happened. And I feel right. like a lot of accounting firms, they are thinking that like, oh, these people aren't going to take business with me. I'm a CPA. But they don't see what's happening. It's, the world is changing. So I want to be on the top of that wave, like I said, as it crashes the shore. Right. Well, I think, I think you, there's a, a way that you illustrate this in the way that you have set your firm up, because in, I believe that instead of having CPA partners, you actually have an administrative partner. That seems quite unusual. Can you explain how that works and what role the administrative partner plays? Yeah. Um, so Megan uh, Murray uh, is my administrative partner. Um, me and Megan have been working together for about a little bit north of 14 years. And our relationship started at a CPA firm way back when, and she was in an administrative role in that firm, and I was a partner in that firm. And over 14 years, we've been in and out of different firms and and even out of public accounting for two years, working in industry to help develop our model. Um, And she's been along with me in that entire journey. 
and we think alike. We are almost exactly the same opinion on vision and very, very determined and very, very focused on what we want to do with our business. And she keeps me um, straight as it relates to don't get too unfocused with the old traditional model because she's not a CPA. She's not even an accountant, but she's a really, really, really great relationship manager and a really, really awesome bookkeeper. And because of that, she's developed these amazing relationships with our clients. And because of that, we decided that we were going to become partners because she has a quality that fits in really, really well with our firm, which is she has no uh, problem with being able to find and land clients and be able to explain to them how we're going to help them reach their goals and visions and then help them set them up through the first 90 days, which is most of that's the hardest part is the hand-holding and psychology process of those clients, and she's amazing at it. And she doesn't get stuck with the whole CP, old CPA traditional type stuff like I get stuck with in my own head still at times. Right. So, yeah, it's an amazing um, relationship. It fits really, really well together. Yeah, another thing that really impresses me is your branding and positioning. Um, this is a great example on your website, a video that introduces you and Megan. I mean, frankly, first of all, you have a video. That's already forward thinking. And, of course, beyond that, the video just surprised me in a sort of warm and humanizing way. It's, it's really wonderfully done. The video talks only a little bit about accounting and more about you and Megan as people and what makes you tick. Can you give me some kind of idea about maybe describe the opening video, video to the listeners and how it positions you in the mind of a prospective client? Yeah, I think that, uh, again, thinking of how the world is changing, I think people love a story. People buy a story. People don't buy bullet points and facts. People buy a story, and you get inspired when you see something that tells a story and says, that's the type of person I want to work with. And we want that story to go out to people so that they know exactly who we are, and they can make a judgment from that as to whether this is the type of person they want to work with. Because... They have to understand who we are just like we have to understand them. And this gives them a great idea of exactly who we are. It tells them our real story. It goes back and talks about what we are passionate about and what Meg pa passionate about her um, – her MMA training and me passionate about wanting to help people and goes back into my history of my father and all. And it just, it's a real story about exactly who we are and how we got here and why we think we are good. We're, we want to help people succeed. It's ingrained in us. So we felt like we wanted to tell a story about who we are and why that was important for people to see, to understand how we think we can help them. And, I think everybody understands that if I have the three letters CPA at the end of my name, already what I can do. So I don't need a video telling them how great I am already doing it. I think everybody already believes that. So to me, having a video that told a story that was different, and that was the key here, is we want it to be different. We, again, thinking about how the industry is changing and how we want to be different, we're positioning ourselves to be on the top of the wave, and we believe what we're doing is going to be the way most firms will go as they realize that it's happening, and we're already going to be way out ahead of it. And I think these stories are how people now are tell, telling others about their businesses. Yeah, I, I mean, that's what we, you go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, I, I was just going to applaud you for, for, for doing it. You talk about family and, and your father, hobbies, interests, and it's not fluff. You tie it back to business. And, you, you know, you sort of demonstrate how your personality and values impact the relationships that you have with clients. Frankly, it's, it's not typical CPA marketing. <laughs> You're really thinking out the box. Um, uh, personally, I think it's brilliant, by the way. Uh, but did you perhaps have any doubts that this was the right thing to do? To do? I, sus I suspect it takes courage to color outside the lines, especially for a CPA. Yeah, uh, great question. So we are a member of the RootWorks community, an academy member, and um, have been a member for about five years. And I think that of I don't know all of the firms. I don't know all of them, how they started and where they ended up. But I would say that of all the firms that are part of his academy since he started it probably about six years ago, we've taken on every single idea that he has said and embraced them. One of the ideas he had was to bring on this videographer who tells stories. And he basically went to his community and said, we have this guy. You guys should consider it and think about doing it. We were the first one with our hand up saying, I'm in. 
So he came to our um, our town, spent an entire day with us filming, and and spent another entire day just talking to us on the phone about our um, goals, dreams, and all that. And um, he took a lot of video that never made it into the final cut, and we put a lot of stuff on the cutting floor. And there was a few parts of it that I was definitely a little apprehensive with that made it into the final, and there were some parts of it that didn't make it into the final that I was apprehensive about it. I think in the end, the one thing I think that helps us be successful with our clients and helps me keep focus on my business is that I'm not really afraid to be vulnerable. And I wish more people in the world, whether it's staff with their employer or employ uh, or a firm to a client or you know father the son or whatever it is, we're not afraid to be more vulnerable. And if people were more vulnerable and communicated better, there would be a lot less misunderstandings in the world. And I've, in the end, I just decided that let's put it out there. There are going to be people who are going to hate it, and there are people who are going to love it. And it's not made for everybody. And but I'm, you know what? But it's the truth, and it's okay to be vulnerable. Yeah, that that whole concept of transparency and accountability and not being afraid to say I don't know when I don't know. It's all part of a move, I think, in certainly in medium, small, medium-sized business, which uh, clearly you, you've embraced. Um, but I think businesses in general, and especially CPAs, spend a lot of their efforts talking about what they do. And that's not really the important part of it, is it? it it's why we do what we do that makes it import, important in that person-to-person connection. Mm-hmm. So in other words... Um, you know, other than making great videos, I'm sure you do a bunch of other cool things in your firm that you feel you do especially well also. Perhaps you could share a couple of those things. Sure. So I told you that we, you know, we go through a, basically a discovery phase and an onboarding process with every single client to find out what it is they really want. And by doing that, we have uncovered tremendous amounts of services that could be provided to these clients by just simply having conversations and them knowing that there's somebody else out there that understands and that might have a solution. So we do that for every client. It's completely outside the box. And you know what? Sometimes it's scary because it it, it might take us away from the work that has to get done. But the reality is, in the end, I think the clients are judging us based upon how successful we help make them become, not how great we prepare their tax return or close their books. So I'm more focused on those items than I am on the traditional-based services. That being said, those traditional-based services have to get done because you know notifications from the IRS or from other places certainly can hurt a relationship too. So we focus on that too, but we're really more focused on digging in and understanding exactly what they um, are trying to accomplish so that we can help them put uh, a solution in place. And there's so many solutions out there. It amazes me. It doesn't amaze me any longer, actually. Then I go out to clients and realize that there's so many people out there that don't know that there are apps on phones nowadays that can help them with their business. At their, or there's cloud-based solutions on their computer that they can download and pay a very small subscription fee that can help them with their businesses. And ways to push buttons and integrate information directly in your accounting file instead of still you know, printing out em- uh, checks, licking envelopes, and sticking them in the mail. People just don't know they exist. And it's hard to believe because in my world, that's been around for five years. So I'm still teaching people that this stuff exists. So they hear it and their eyes light up and like, oh, my God, I didn't know this exists. We really need this. And to me, that helps provide a solution, helps us provide more services, and in the end, solves the number one requirement for us, which is to feel good about helping our clients. So that's kind of outside the box stuff we do for every client is to figure out kind of what they want, and we jump right in and we solve it. And our newest big venture that we're going into is education. And I think, um, so we're, uh, we re- rebranded ourselves recently as Berg Advisors and we relaunched our website and we're actually moving into a new space and building out a collaborative based space for our client, uh, our, I'm sorry, our staff, but also for visitors. And our goal here is to bring people together who we don't know today with other people who we either do know or don't know today to come together and learn about things that can help them with their businesses in a very, very low-key, collaborative, 
sharing, and fun environment that is not the stuffy-based education that's available out there that nobody really wants to go to anymore and they're scared to go to. We want to do it in this very um, interesting and um, very unique outside-the-box way. So we are actually building out an education center within our new space, which is a scary venture to build out a big space that's going to be empty part of the time. But uh, it's really our job to fill it. And I'm so passionate about education and helping people that I don't see that this is not the next step for, for our industry to also be the leaders in providing businesses education and what's out there and how to do things and let then talk to this guy. He's the best that I've ever met and start to break down some of the misinformation that's available on, you know, on the internet. Interesting. And I, I, I suspect that you'll obviously uh, existing clients are going to want to take uh, advantage of that. But uh, I'm sure uh, behind the scenes that this is going to open the door to a bunch more people who you might not otherwise get access to. Yes, so we, we have some really unbelievable ideas. I think about, for example, the controller community out there and how the controllers of the world are so underserviced. They're, they're buried all the time with stuff to do inside their businesses, but they're, they're not really, they're not thought about when it comes to, do they, are they doing things efficiently? Do they have people understanding their needs in, a fit in time? And I'm thinking, go out there, bring in controllers, have 25 controllers sitting around the room, and let's just talk to them about what it is their needs are and how we can help them with their lives, which they can take back to their businesses and hopefully imp implement and make their lives better. I think that those people are great people. They're all hard worker, but they've all been somewhat under un, under noticed to some extent in in the educational community. We always go right to the CFOs, or we go to the the owners, right? Or we go to you know all, or we go to you know a lot of the high end, the the C level people. But I think about these controllers. They're they're the ones who are on the front lines of these businesses. So we're thinking completely outside the box of how we're going to bring education and go right to the people who can really use it with the hopes that people will know more about who we are by um, them visiting us and talking and being a collaborative-based environment. And, you know, we don't know where it's going to go. We're not sure if it's going to be a revenue-based model or not, or it's just going to be a freebie. Or, uh, I, we don't know. Uh, honestly, that's the fun part of the business that I run now is that we're just going to do it and we'll see where it goes. I think it's kind of a little bit – so I spend a lot of time out in California uh, working with Intuit. I'm on the Intuit Accountant, Accountants Council, so I help them with the development of their products. So I'm out there twice a year working with them on the development of their software, and, um, and I've spent some time out there for other reasons. And I look at those businesses and say, oh, my God, they just open up businesses and they just go for it. They just try it. They may not have even a plan that they're sure works, but they just go for it. And I look at that and say – most accounting firms are just scared. They're fearful. They, they don't take chances. So we're just going to try it, and we'll, we'll see where it goes. Uh, Andrew, I can feel the sort of passion and excitement mm -hmm. in, in your voice there. And I, I don't want to dampen your enthusiasm, but maybe we can just look at the other side of the coin for a moment. Mm -hmm. What's an area that you wish you, you kind of did better? Wish that I could do better. Is that what the question was? I'm sorry? Yes. An area that you wish the firm or you could do better? Yes. Uh, I wish I could um, source out and find the right employees to work in this environment in a what it would be considered to be a five-year startup environment with the passion to help people and realize that it's not just about how to know how to do bank recs really well, which is a traditional base model, and start thinking a little bit more outside the box and engage the millennial generation a little bit more in, un in understanding there's a difference in public accounting than what they're told when they're in college from the big four or the big boys. So I wish I could find a better way to um, find those people. I don't do a good job of um, locating them and then – interviewing them properly, and then onboarding them properly. I, don't, I, I, I do a decent job, but I wish I could do it better. I also um, think I, I, would like to do a, I would like to do a better job of, um, of um, marketing. I mean, we do a really good job of marketing. We're a little outside the box, but I don't think I'm engaged in social media as much as I'd like to and blog 
three-minute videos and tell people kind of the, the, some bits and pieces stories that they can read and know more about us. I don't think I do a really good job of, you know, portraying on a regular basis kind of who we are, unless you find my website and see it. So, um, and I think one of the things that I'm probably not not as good about, at what I used to be is preparing um, individual tax returns. I think that as we've moved our model away from that, we provide it, but we only provide it for a select number of clients now because it's not a, it's not part of our our, our our heavy revenue generating model. So I'd say that uh, it's not a wish that I could do better. I would say it's more like I know that I could do better. I just not, I'm really focused in other areas. Yeah, no, I I completely understand this, and um, I mean, have you considered also the possibility that that could be something that you could outsource to somebody who is keen and well, you know, well uh, educated and wants to to keep that kind of business going. In mm-hmm. fact, outsourcing per se is that something you've considered? Uh, we've considered it, yes. Um, we haven't done it yet. So I feel like, to me, in order to successfully outsource outside of the traditional model, meaning outside of my general location of the Philadelphia area or coming to the office, um, needs good middle management. You have to have a good middle management in place to make that easy to happen. So we've actually started to hire that middle management now, taking a lot of that responsibility away from me um, because, frankly, I'm too busy and I don't do a good job of being a middle manager anymore. I guess that's something else I could do better. And right. once that middle management is in place, which um, are just joining us actually right now and we focus our attention on the other areas, I think it's absolutely something we're going to talk about, not because – I think some people think about outsourcing like as being a cheaper option. Um, to me, it's not about cheaper. It's about finding the person who thinks the way that I do, and I know they're around this world. It's not just in the Philadelphia area. And being able to find that person who can do the work, no matter where they are, is the type of person I want to work with. And I think that's really, for me, why I'm thinking of the outsource model. Um, for tax returns, uh, I get a little concerned about the independence issue. I definitely... I'm a little bit of a control freak, so I get a little worried from that perspective. Um, that being said, I know a lot of people do it, and I just n- have never embraced that model yet. And I don't know if I'll ever embrace that model on the tax return side, absolutely on the bookkeeping and accounting side. I can absolutely see myself getting there very soon. Well, um, I think you've answered very honestly, and the answers are very interesting. If I can kind of taken in a slightly different direction. As we all drown in more and more information with less and less time to sort through it, what do you find that your business owner clients are looking for from their CPA today? So I think the number one thing is that a lot of these owners know that there's technology available out there to help them become more efficient and help them with their businesses. But most of them are fearful of technology, don't know who to turn to. And also, there's so many different choices out there. They don't know which choice to make, even if they've agreed that they're going to go with a piece of technology. So there could be five different softwares out there that provide the exact same solution. So I think that what happens is because business owners are so short of time, a lot of them will buy one, spend an hour on it, and think that it's going to be the solution for them. And it generally ends up being a white elephant on their desk. And I think a lot of it comes down to poor implementation and poor planning and procedure about setting something that setting that up. So we've found a lot of success in going to clients and understanding what they want and then realizing that if they're looking for a program that can help them col- uh, collect their time data, move it into their accounting software, and then be automatically reported to their payroll service, we know exactly what solution we would suggest both for not only the payroll service, not only the accounting software, but also the time collection data. And not only would we suggest it to them, but we would go in there, help them install it, and train them on how to use it, which I think is the big key. Most people are great. Thank you very much for your solution, but we'll drop the ball in the execution. And we just dig down deep and help them with the execution piece. And I think that's the difference in our community. A lot of accountants won't dig in deep. Maybe, again, it's that fear of being vulnerable or doing something wrong or losing a client because they did something that went you know, poorly. And 
I look at it from the other perspective. I think that if it goes really, really well, the clients will are um, they become really sticky, and they love that type of interaction, and it helps them with their businesses. So technology is a really, really big one that I think has been a huge benefit. So it's, I guess, half consulting, half technology, implementation of technology, consulting, I guess I would consider it to be. And I think the other one is business advice. Show me a dashboard of my business that I can get on a regular basis, push a button that I can read and understand and will help me make a decision about what to do with my business in the very near future. So we go in and help them develop those dashboards, teach them how to read it, and then help them make the decisions after they've had a chance to read it and understand it. So right. those two big er- two big areas. No, very valuable. Very valuable to the entrepreneur. Very busy, doesn't want to spend a lot of time on anything in particular, but if they can get a snapshot of their business that allows them to make decisions and move on quickly, I think that's very valuable. I also think you have an interesting view of consulting. I think it's a modern-day view of consulting, moving away from the the old-fashioned management consultants who'd come in, do their project, leave a report, a list of things to get done, but there was no implementation element to it. Uh, So it's encouraging to say that you implement, train, and basically make it work with the client before you let go of the reins. Yeah, Ian, uh, it's a great point. So um, I can't tell you how many times I heard the story where somebody says, I hired this accountant, uh, this consultant, I paid him a lot of money, and they gave me this report and left it for me. Yeah. And I hear those things, and I think to myself, oh, my God, how does something like that happen? Like, I couldn't even live with myself knowing I charged a big fee and left them a big piece of paper and hoped that they were going to figure it out. So I'd much rather be grassroots and say, listen, um, you know, we're going to take this a step at a time. There is no report. It might be even back of a napkin, but I can tell you this. I'm going to be there on the front lines with you, helping you make sure it gets implemented. And um, I don't want to be that person that charges a big fee, leaves a big report, and hopes that they figure it out. I don't want to be the person that they say, I can't believe I spent that money on that guy and he left me a report. So, yeah, I, I, don't, I think the, con, the word consulting has got a little bit of a bad misnomer, too, because when you look at that word and you say, I'm going to hire a consultant, a lot of people will go, whoa, 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 cringe, because you hear the word consultant, and automatically people think that's expensive without even knowing what they're going to do or how much it's going to cost. And I've kind of, I actually cringe from the word consulting, um, and, and that's why I say business advisory. And I really don't want to be lumped in with those consultants because I definitely do not have those boilerplate template huge reports, and I definitely do not have those humongous fees. I'm more grassroots. Let's put one piece in place and let's go reach our goal, and let's do it together. Let's not let's leave it for you and hope that you get it done. Yes, in a prior life. I've been the recipient as a manager of a business, some of those consultants' reports, and left basically to figure out how I actually implement. So I completely concur. And Andrew, just let me say that the industry has changed dramatically since I first became a chartered accountant. Unfortunately, I'll just say back in the day, (laughs) lots of people are nervous about rapid change. Others embrace those changes as an opportunity. As we kind of look forward to the future, where do you see the opportunities? So if I'm right about some of these facts, the industry on average is in the 60s. That means that in the next five to ten years, there's going to be a lot of people leaving the accounting industry. Uh, If I'm also correct, a lot of young people vacated the industry back in the dot-com eras. So there's there's not a lot of CPAs that are between the ages of 35 and 50 who who are running firms like I am. And the ones that are younger than that are running firms that aren't CPAs or these new age type firms. So I feel like there's going to be this huge, again, if the law of supply and demand is accurate, there's going to be a huge demand for services as the a lot of people leave the industry and there's not enough people to take care of it. I think to myself, if there's nobody joining the industry to prepare tax returns, who's going to do it when all the tax preparers leave the industry, which is which is very scary for me to think that that would be a revenue generator because I, I don't know who's going to prepare the tax returns in the future either. So when I look in the future, I look at it as these entrepreneurs that are coming up that are in their 25s and 30s are building businesses 
in a different fashion. They're focused on their business. They want to outsource everything, and they want somebody to give them information quickly, and they want to give it to them accurately, and they want to give it to them when they want it. That means it's technology-based. It has to be available to them 24-7. You have to speak to them on their terms, if at all, and you are going to be outsourced all of the information to make sure it gets done right. They don't, they don't mind paying for it. They don't want to do it. They want to focus on their product, their business, their service, and they want somebody else to give it to them. And I think that the bookkeeper mis- is a misnomer nowadays, too. Again, with software coming into play, everybody thinks they're a bookkeeper, but I think a lot of people are great input people, and there's really not people who are full-charge type bookkeepers around any longer. So with the shortage there, I think we're going to be uniquely positioned to provide services as a CPA firm in my low 40s or upper 40s to 50 and um, provide business advisory services where there's going to be very few people like myself who are have the CPA piece, the technology piece, the business advisory piece, the education piece, and the size firm that we have that we have we have and we're trying to grow, I just don't think it's going to exist in the future. I think it's going to be a lot of fragmented firms as these older people start to leave the industry. So many of these traditional large firms don't really have small business divisions, and they're looking for small business divisions. The problem is you have to have somebody who understands small business to run these divisions. That's a hard thing to find. So I think that it's clear that um, – we're going to, there's going to be a huge influx of small business needs, outsourcing, technology-based, 24-7, cloud-based type people who want to access stuff on their mobile phones, and we have to be ready to be able to service that exact type of person. And I think we're already ready to service that person in my firm. I think everybody else has to be ready in the next five years for that. That's a very interesting perspective. If you could go back 20 years and give yourself one piece of advice, Andrew, what might that be? Um, besides invest in Apple, um, uh, I would have said focus your attention more on tech. Focus your attention more on technology. Um, we love technology. I've always loved technology. I've always, since the beginning of time, I've built and took apart servers and put them together, and that's hardware-based, but not enough software-based. And I think that if I had focused more of my attention on tech back then, I would be further ahead today, maybe even understanding how to develop my own app and not be so apprehensive to that or apprehensive to develop my own software. I wish I had focused my attention a little bit more on the tech side, software development side, as opposed to um, doing 500 1040s in uh, March. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, I think that's a, like, wise words indeed. Uh, wise words indeed. Um, now, as we kind of, the clock starts to run down, um, what is there that I haven't asked you that you'd like to tell us about? Um, I, I think that um, I said a lot and probably might be um, uh, starting to focus a little bit of my attention on this very similar type topics. I think that there's, um, I think, a, a, again, trying to change the perception of the accounting industry and and I think that it really involves the people in the accounting industry to help change this perception. There's a lot of people in it providing old type services and fearful maybe the old the new services and or telling people out there the misnomer of these new services. And I think because of that, there's a lot of people entering into industries that a lot of traditional based accounting firms don't understand. So what happens is they take these people on as clients and they're really – not doing the work that's necessary to make sure these people are successful. So, for example, one of those industries is e-commerce. So multi-channel e-commerce businesses is one of the ones that I'm focused on, and I just know that 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 industry is woefully underserved from an accounting perspective as it relates to somebody saying, how do I connect all of these channels and my inventory into my software at a push of a button basis so I can understand exactly what's going on with my business on a, reg, on a regular basis. And I think what's happening now, they hire these accountants, either internal or external, and what happens is a lot of this stuff is being done manually. And because it's manual, it's not instantaneous, and sometimes it's not even right. So I think about it and say, wait, there's software. It's all, this is all software-based, and I'm smart enough. I understand accounting. I should be able to connect these until it works. So we're focusing our attention right now on that multi-channel e-commerce business out there and the pieces that need to fit together in order for it to work. 
on what softwares it works well. So I'm thinking about the next step of evolutionaries. How do I develop a procedure in order to share it with other accountants and or share it with businesses out there to say, if you have a multi-channel e-commerce based business and you don't have a solution, here is one that works and you can trust me because I'm a CPA and I've been through this and I've vetted it out and I know it works. Not that some technology expert built it and then says it works when you push a button, which we're all scared to have happen, push a button and hopefully it works, is to vet it out until it absolutely works. So I'm working together right now with a vendor in the inventory management field, um, a vendor in the accounting software field and another vendor in the app field and pulling together that right now because it doesn't exist. At least it doesn't exist as it relates to utilizing the Intuit software. It does exist for, for the Zero software, but a lot more users out there are using the Intuit software right now. So trying to help them develop that, as you know, I'm part of the Accountants Council. So right. the one thing I would say, the other thing I would just say is that um, traditional accountants need to stop, start thinking about what's going to happen and less about what is happening. And that's what my one piece of advice would be. Forward looking rather than rear would looking. Yes. Yes. That's exactly. an interesting concept for a CPA. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> You're right. It is. <laughs> Unfortunately, the clock has actually caught up with us now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd like to thank Andrew Berg, founding partner of Berg Advisors, for being so generous with his time today. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. I appreciate it. I really do, Ian. Thanks for your time as well. If people want to learn more about you and Berg Advisors, uh, what's the best way for them to do so? Well, you can check out our website at www.bergpartners.com. And on there are our emails and our phone number. And we're located just outside of Philadelphia, currently in Ballot Kinwood, about to move to Villanova, Pennsylvania in January in our new space. And uh, check us out on our website. Look at our videos. Email us. Call me. Text, well, you can't text me. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at, at BergCPA. Uh, you can check us out on Facebook as well. Okay. Just that uh, website address for the, for the listeners again, please, Andrew. Sure. www.bergpartners, P-A-R-T-N-E-R-S. So www.bergpartners.com. Okay. There you have it. This is Ian Wellham saying goodbye for now. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time on the Accounting Success Podcast.